Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to showcase one of my finals I had for a class called Systems Programming. So for this final, our goal was to use a get statement in C to extract data from a website. Uh, we had to use a TCP protocol to start off. I will run it and show you guys how it works. So if we compile it here and then run it. So what it does is these are a list of weather stations uh, that the government has on their the, their website. And you can choose a list from A through N. This is just local areas around where I live. So for example, if you choose uh, Des Moines in Iowa, you press F and you press enter. Then what it does is it uh, shows the weather, the wind, the temp, and the humidity. So this is pretty much all our final was, was to establish a connection and print out uh, some of the stuff that they had on their website. Um, another thing that they wanted us to do is to print out a file. And this file says server info.txt. So this is pretty much the get statement that, or all the information that was on their website, we pulled it and stored it in a file. So if we open this up, this is pretty much uh, the information that we pulled. And then we had to parse through this information. So for example, it says location, it says Des Moines International Airport. And that's what's printed right there because it's in between the location tags. So we had to parse through this information. Uh, we had to show the station ID as well, which you can also see right there. And the weather, wind, temp, and humidity. So if I go and show you guys the code, um, I have two files right here. Uh, the reason why I have two files is because we had trouble connecting specifically to the w1.weather.gov so what my professor did is he pulled it from their website and put it on his website. So we just had to connect to his website and do it. So his website information is on here, which I'm not going to show you. I'll pull up what it would no typically look like though. So to start off, we have a socket connect function that returns the integer of the socket. And here is a check AFK function as well. Um, one of our other goals is to have the uh, program time out after 60 seconds. So this is pretty much what it's doing right there. And here is the main function. So we have the port, needs to be on port 80. We have the host, which is w1.weather.gov to connect to their website. And these are just predefined uh, places that you can choose from. So what we do here is we check if the user is AFK and while we're doing that we want to see if they get if they send us a station number so whichever letter that they sent us from up here so a through n we're going to set the get statement to whatever this is or whatever station they sent us and this is how the get statement is formatted so you have get and then you have the uh, path to the file from their website then you have host and you have to have a bunch of carriage returns as well to let the string know that it's done. So we just kind of do a case statement letter by letter. And if you in, if they enter a incorrect letter, then it will keep repeating here. Once they sent us a letter, we will start doing the socket connect we will start connecting to with the socket. Um, one of the things we should have did was check for errors. If we go back to the socket connect function, we don't really check any errors to see if there was any misconnections, which we probably should have done that. Every time there's a number that gets returned, you should always check to see if it returns successfully or if there was an error. And right here, we just saved the buffer to the file. So this part right here is really, really inefficient, but this is what we use to parse through the file or the file that we received from the server. So pretty much this is just parsing through all of this from the server that was in our buffer. Um, what we do is we loop through and we get the start of each tag. So if I pull this file back up, location, so we get 
whichever position this character is in, followed by this, then followed by that. And then we skip ahead and then we get whatever is in between from this point, followed by this and this. Uh, pretty much that's all we do. And it, it seems to work out pretty well. Then we store those locations in these variables right here, depending on if it's the temperature, the humidity, or weather, etc. And then what we do, uh, so we do that for all of the humidity and all the tags. So what we do down here is uh, we concatenate the starting point and the ending point, each letter in between with the buffer that we have. And then we continue doing that until we reach the end point. Then we store whatever that was in, whatever all the text was in into these string arrays right there. We could make it a function that does this all for us to make it more efficient, but we didn't really have time to do that. And then finally we print out station, location, weather, wind, and temp. So that is pretty much it. I hope you guys find this interesting and hopefully you guys can learn from it a little bit. This is the website that we pulled it from, uh, w1.weather.gov. You can select a state, say like we do Colorado, do find. Gives us all of the weather stations in Colorado that we can pull information from. So it says right here, there are 63 stations in Colorado. If I go ahead and run this program one more time, if we choose, uh, let's see, Iowa City, press I, and then it gives us the different information for Iowa City. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really hope you guys learned from it. And if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.